Um, so, hi everybody, I'm uh, Benoit Ogier from uh, Ifremer, and I'll present you the test campaign down for the Floton project. I'll first, uh, can you change the, the slide, please? Thank you. Uh, I'll first describe the general uh, arrangement of the test in our wave tank. Then I focused on the, the two models, uh, respectively the Volton US floater, as uh, it was said by uh, Laure, called here uh, VUS, V-U-S, and the operation uh, ship called uh, WACA, WK. And I'll uh, conclude uh, with a list of the physical quantities measured during the test. Next slide. So um, the test campaign took place in our deep wave tank at Ifremer in Brest, uh, west part of Brittany which is a 50 meters long and a 12 and a half meters wide tank equipped by a wave maker on one side and a damping beach on the other side. Our tank is quite unique uh, due to its uh, 10 meters mean depth and uh, is uh, 20 meters uh, part at the deepest. And also because it's filled of uh, seawater. So those tests have been done at scale 150, following through the scaling low, uh, summarized for the most relevant quantities here in the table. Next. Our goal here was to test the behavior of the ship and the wind turbine floater side by side on a float to float configuration. So for uh, different sea states and different wave orientation. So the VUS floater in yellow was anchored on the center of the tank. When the ship was connected to an octagonal structure, you can see here in blue, uh, each face of this uh, octagonal structure giving a different orientation toward the wave, respectively 30, 45, 90 degrees and head, uh, head uh, to the wave configuration. Uh, like it's re represented here. So on this video, you can see the dynamic position in system used for the ship based on four spring uh, connected to the hull thanks to lines and pulleys. So the wind turbine floater is connected to a 10 meters diameter ring submerged at five meters, you can see it here, and the anchor lines are linked to springs at the surface thanks to a set of lines and low friction pulley. Both anchoring system allows the two floaters to move freely with no contact. As mentioned before, the octagon allows to change the direction of the, of the ship toward the waves in the basin uh, when the floater anchoring points are changed along the ring. So we've got four configuration, 90 degrees downstream, 90 degrees upstream, 45 degrees and the end head to the waves. So on this top view, uh, you can see the floater uh, here uh, represented in black anchored to, uh, no, the floater is, excuse me, represented in yellow anchored to the submerged ring and the octagonal structures in blue again, uh, marked by the number three is hanged on two walk uh, ways in blue and the uh, Waka ship model is connected to one face of the octagonal uh, structures thanks to vertical beams and uh, springs assembly simulating the dynamic positioning system. We've got also two wave gauges uh, used during the test. So it's marked by number seven placed upstream and number six at the mid tank uh, on the position of the floater. Next one. So the Voltern US floater designed by UC Main was built by a local company uh, with hollow columns and pontoon. Uh, the pontoon where uh, most of the weight is contained are equipped with a system of drawers uh, to tune the yaw and pitch inertia. And the weight in the columns uh, can be lifted to adjust center of gravity and pitch inertia. So the model is equipped by a mast and deported weight to modulate the turbine and um, and the mast has been shrouded for rigidity. So as you can see in the table, uh, excuse me, back again. 
Yes, thank you. Uh, we have a great match between measured and designed geometrical properties. Next one. Center of uh, gravity and inertia are measured uh, using both uh, a calibration swing, so calibration swing in, is on the top video, or an oscillation on two lines. Uh, it's a bottom video. Uh, so the the technique of uh, the two lines are used for the tricky axis like the yo here. Again, a great match between measured and design properties, but the small discrepancies are taken into account in the in the simulation, of course. Next slide. Yes, to represent the catenary mooring. Uh, designed by uh, UC Main uh, in the design of the floater, we have chosen to uh, simplify the mooring using an equivalent elastic stiffness. So the three columns are then connected to the ring, submerged at a uh, depth, uh, which has to assure the same 45 vertical angle on the line. The line are made of uh, dynama, so they can be considered uh, stiff. And the line then came back to the surface thanks to low friction pulley and are connected to preset springs. Next slide. The springs are chosen to fit the design stiffness and pretension is applied to reproduce the weight of the line. This pretension is controlled by load sensor attached to the spring. So, uh, the orientation of the floater toward the waves is tuned by changing the anchor point along the ring, and the operation is made by divers, uh, which are uh, who are part of our teams. Next one. So this quite complex configuration of elastic mooring um, has been calibrated using pull-out test, and the result is an order two polynomial behavior. Illustrate, illustrated here in the, in the graph. So regarding the sheep, uh, the, the, the target, targeted sheep was a 185 meter sheep and it has been scaled uh, as well at 150. And the model has been built by an, another local company. Please uh, note here that uh, due to the total weight close to 400 kilos and the length of the model. Uh, the model was built with a stainless steel internal structures covered by a machine fiberglass sandwich. So you can see here you the internal uh, shape uh, stainless in uh, in uh, gray and uh, and the fiberglass sandwich around. So again, excellent uh, match for the geometrical properties thanks to the machining process. For the inertia and center of gravity, they have been measured used uh, a swing. You can see here the reason for the stainless internal structures when the ship is uh, hanged at the stern and bow and fully loaded. You can imagine uh, that the structure is, uh, is needed. So we have a, a good rigidity of the model. So good match between design and model Again, accepted, of course, for the yo, as you can see in the table. Uh, why? Because it's greatly impacted by the weight of the internal structures, which is needed. But again, the difference is uh, taken into account in the simulation. As uh, illustrated in the video, the dynamic positioning system is represented uh, in the tank by four vertical springs connected uh, through low friction pulleys to the hull. The connection points are placed at the free surface level to limit the combined effect. So the DP behavior, the dynamic positioning behavior is a combination of spring pretension and stiffness but also distance between the pairs of springs, uh, meaning the vertical beams. So next slide, please. Due to this complex combination, we choose to target the sway behavior before the yo, and to give away the surge. Uh, as you can see, we've got a huge difference in it. Uh, but why, but we give it up 
because uh, the relative position of the ship and the floater on this direction is of second order. So, to conclude, here is the list of the 24 uh, quantities measured during each test. So, first are the load uh, ship uh, positioning system measured at the four spring connection, so the four uh, springs uh, placed on the vertical beams. Then uh, we have the load on the bus mooring lines, so the three mooring lines connected uh, to the three columns and attached to springs at the surface. And we also use this um, uh, load sensor for pre-tensioning. Then we've got the two wave gauges described before and used also for wave calibration. And in the next slide, we have the six degrees of freedom measured by motion tracking. Uh, in our tank, we are using Qualysys system as a motion tracking system. So we have the three rotation and three translation measured for both models, thanks uh, to reflecting sphere place on the ship and the floater. You, you have an example of it on the Waka ship, uh, the real right.